I have dedicated my professional career to the study and control of arthropods. Okay, so now this is this, the next section of my uh, of part four. So part four B. Uh, this is going to get really confusing. I should have organ. I should have thought about the numbering of these a lot earlier. But anyway, that's okay. So now intersexual selection. So I st I talked in the last part about how the reproductive cost to different to sexes may be different between males and females. Um, a male may want to maximize his reproductive output by mating with as many females as possible. A female may maximize her reproductive output by choosing the best quality male, or she might choose characteristics in the male, such as um, does he build a good nest? Um, what has he done in the past? Remember, a lot of these, a lot of birds, for example, are really a lot more, have better memories and are very mo much more observant than we've given them credit for. So seeing how a male's behaved, seeing how the males behaved with other females. Sometimes it might be in a female's best interest to steal a male from a female if he sees that this male is particularly caring or particularly good. Um, this again happens in our society. Um, there are, well, I'll, I'll get into that later. Nonetheless, the point is is that um, females will look, you know, look for these different traits. And the, one of the, the the problems is is how would a female animal recognize good genes? Or even, actually, plants do the same thing, believe it or not. How would they? How do they recognize? Um, and so, looking at, well, I'm looking at strict, what I talked about before, Wallacean fitness, wherein a characteristic, some character that can be recognized ties directly to fitness, potential fitness of, those off, of the offspring. Um, one one study that was done, I'll have to look up the site on this one, had to do with uh, one of the, um, pe not peacocks, they're uh, pheasants, ring-necked pheasants, where they found that a um, the spur length of the male, which aren't in the species used in combat, not like chickens, so the spurs, the length of the spur really doesn't do anything for the bird. It doesn't make the male better at anything in his life. But there's a correlation between spur length and survivability of his offspring. The longer the spur, the healthier his offspring seem to be. Um, people, they suspect that has something to do with um, hormone levels that produce the spur. It's not that the spur itself influences it. It has to do with the, the chemical features, the physiological trait that produces the big spur also produces stronger offspring. So females will choose males based on that spur length. Um, so that right there, you know, there's, there's a... a that's that's an example. That's where there's truth in advertising. That's pure Wallacean fitness at work. <clears throat> um, but there's a really fascinating area that goes into it. And this is this is great stuff. It's called cryptic female choice. Um, there's a researcher uh, Eberhard that's done a, has a book on uh, sexual selection in cryptic female choice, which unfortunately I don't own. I have a couple of photocopies of chapters of. I don't have the original book. I'd love to get it, but it's way outside of my price range. Um, actually, he's got a couple of books I want. But this cryptic female choice. Now, this is amazing to me, okay? <clears throat> this is, again, this is pure intersexual selection. This is pure battle between the sexes. And this can be as simple as <clears throat> a lot of species. Um, uh, chickens. There you go. Chickens are one of them. The common barnyard chicken. Uh, what is it? Uh, Gallus multiformis? I, I don't recall. Um, females, if, if you've ever seen chickens, you know, females run away from the males. They run. F males catch them and mount them. Female doesn't have a whole lot of choice, right? You would think, given that reproductive behavior, that a female would um, basically father, or so father is the right word, la mother to whatever offspring of whatever male happened to catch her. Um, you know, that's, that's, it's, it's, you know, kind of a brutal uh, situation. Mosquitoes again. Um, brutal situation, but it works with that species. But studies have shown that there tends to be, um, yes, it's true, females will mate with whatever male catches them. So you've got a bunch of chickens, a bunch of hens. You've got 
big bad rooster, and you've got a couple of other lesser roosters. Obviously, if you've seen chickens, the big rooster chases all the little males away, keeps them at bay. If he observes one chasing a female, he runs up and attacks them, knocks them off, and will actually mate with the female immediately afterwards. Um, so that right there prevents that social system prevents the female from necessary from you know she's obviously more often than not producing chicks from the dominant male. But then there's they found that there's another method they use. Females, when they 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 don't have you know these they they have internal fertilization obviously chickens do, um, but the sperm packet of the male is kept in the cloaca of the female, and she can choose to let it go further and fertilize the eggs, or she can walk away and extrude it. She can shit out the sperm if she wants to. She doesn't have to use it for her eggs. So, it's in her best interest to let this male do his thing, and if it's not the eggs she wants, if it's not the father she wants, she there it goes. Um, so she's ensuring that she's getting the best possible sperm. That's a real simple concept. Um, some of... Um, some things are some of the salamanders I believe it's the genus Plethodon they actually do this it's it's this uh, mating upwards strategy where the female comes that they come out of hibernation she walks around sees a male she mates with him she walks around if she sees another male and he's um, oh scragglier than the first male she walks by ignores him won't let him mate goes on further, hey, there's a better male. She'll mate with him. So the last male she mated with is always the best male. And they, I don't know how they're able to keep this, you know, but anyway, the point is they always will be mating upward. Um, and when it's all done, mating, you know, the mating season's over with and it's time to actually fertilize eggs, she um, uses the sperm from the last male that she mated with, which is by definition the best. So if she comes out of hibernation, meets Mr. Loser male, but then for whatever reason doesn't run into any more males, well, she's still got that. She can still use that sperm. If she meets a better, you know, so she's always looking for a better male. So that's a one, that's that's cryptic female choice. The female's not choosing who to mate with. It's why it's cryptic, hidden. The female's choosing on a more subtle level. That's That goes unsaid. And um, now this is where it gets really cool. Oh, don't check my time here. Um, okay, I'm going to introduce this concept and I'm going to take it up in the next step because this is the next uh, 4C because this is really, really important. Um, maybe I'll get to it. Who knows? One of the ways, one of the mo best examples of cryptic female choice and people have people think there's a possibility that humans have, have this, um, although there's some debate about it. Um, at the very least, some mammals have it. Um, and this is with this cryptic female choice. It's called the, the vaginal obstacle course. It's kind of funny. Um, but what this is, is the idea that there is also a core. I talked about spurs in the pheasants. There's a correlation between sperm motility and the fitness of the parent. Okay. And some of the cause is this isn't always the case, but some of the causal factors of it have to do with the. Um, just the, the genes that produce longevity, longevity, uh, survivorship, vitality, also tend to pr have spare resources to make you know better swimmers in sperm. Not all, like, again, it's not always, but it, in, it's definitely the case in species, and it has been tested to be so. So you've got strong male has strong sperm. Um, you know, which is, oh, anyway, I'll let the that that there's somewhere a, there's a bad joke in there somewhere I'm gonna let it go. Um, so how does the female know the sperm is strong? Well, by making the distance the sperm has to swim to get to the egg as difficult as possible, she's ensuring that only the best sperm are gonna make it to the egg. So even if she mates with multiple males, only the ones from the best, and within the ejaculate of a single male, only those best sperm that have the most the strongest, you know, no mutations, no defects, no anything, are the ones that are likely to make it. Okay, so you start getting into this. Okay, now I'm going to continue on with the vaginal obstacle course. <laughs>